I am going straight to a very special guest who is joining us. He is the newsmaker of the show today. Ram Madhav is joining us. Ram Madhav, thank you so much for speaking to NDTV. What is the meaning of 22nd of January to you? Uh, how will this really impact or change the minority majority narrative of India? In fact, 22nd January should permanently put an end to this very discriminatory, very divisive discourse about minority and majority. We are one nation. We are united by our culture, our civilization, our great forefathers. And in this particular case, Bhagwan Ram symbolizes that great national unity. So the event on January 22nd symbolizes greater unity of our nation or that should be the ultimate objective of this whole initiative because as I said, Ram is the greatest unifier of our country and secondly, it will be the symbol of the reassertion of the national soul of our country. So every Indian should look at it only from that prism not from the prism of any religion, any, any other divisive prism. A national assertion, do you see this as a moment of great nationalism? Right from the beginning, not now, right from the time we all got associated with this moment, we always asserted that this, uh, this is a movement for national regeneration only. It is not at all any sectoral movement, not at all for or against any particular community. Actually, this is uh, a nation reasserting its civilizational and cultural identity. That's how we have uh, always looked at it, above politics, above religion, above all other sectoral differences. India certainly, Mr. Ram Madhav, should move beyond Ayodhya from Ayodhya on 22nd. But there is a great degree of politics which is around the consecration ceremony. Uh, the objections which have been raised by the Shankaracharyas that uh, the rituals are not as per the Dharma Shastras. What will you say to that? Uh, first of all, let us not uh, over generalize the opposition. Uh, I, for that matter, everybody in the country uh, has noticed the, uh, you know, the uh, opinions expressed by certain senior religious leaders and of course the opposition uh, leadership of the country. These two are two very different things. We respect each and every religious leader. Every Sankracharya is highly respected. For the important reason that he occupies an important place, his, uh, his, uh, uh, his position occupies an important place in the philosophical, spiritual and religious life of this nation. So in that sense, they are all very highly respected people. They have different opinions. Uh, one need not fully agree with those opinions. For, that, for example, the sole argument that uh, rituals are not followed as per the Dharma Shastras is, uh, to my knowledge, is not fully correct. Because uh, whatever rituals are happening are happening as per the uh, Dharma Shastras only. And there has always been a precedent in this country. You know, for that matter, uh, take the history of all the temples or even those temples run by many mats and all. Ancient temples, they were all consecrated by the kings, the royals of those times. The kings and royals used to be the great patrons of uh, the religious places in our country. They used to consecrate them. And I can give you, Maria, the very post-independence example, the very illustrious example of Somnath Temple. Do you know who actually consecrated the Shiva Linga in that temple? It was the President of India, Dr. Rajendra Prasad. You know, but, but, the, but the question uh, of selective invitation, why invite those who may not have been involved at all with the entire Ram Temple movement. That's what uh, several supporters of yours are also saying. Uh, nobody 
has been not invited everybody is invited to visit that temple only on that day 22nd january because of the constraints of space and other logistical constraints uh, a section of our eminent citizens of the country have been invited so in that you know ram mandir that is coming up in ayodhya we all see it as the rashtra mandir it's a symbol of a resurgent nation a nation that is reinventing itself that is asserting its national soul national self so every important person in the country whether he is a believer in ram or not a believer in ram probably many of them would be believing in some other sampradaya you know there was mm. a dispute over whether this temple uh, should belong to one sampradaya or other traditional practices probably certain given sampradayas will conduct they will be the masters of ceremony we call it but when it comes to the temple it belongs to every sampradaya every tradition every person of this country because it is not just a religious monument it is a monument for our national honor and national dignity in that sense yes invitation has been extended to different sections of the society those who do not regard bhagwan ram as a as an avatar or uh, an incarnation of uh, the divinity they must respect the value system that he represents ram is described as an epitome of a great value system he is called the maryada purushottam the epitome of great value system that value system whether you are in film industry i mean even more if you are in film industry or any other industry you all should uh, really respect it that is what this country stands for in that sense everybody deserves an invitation so you cannot say somebody is undeserving he got it somebody deserving he didn't get it nobody has been denied everybody will be welcome there not just on 22nd but subsequently the temple will be open for everybody yes so there are number of those also mr ram madhav who are raising these concerns that why should the consecration ceremony happen when the temple is not fully complete you know it is half built uh, and 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 also that there is this impatient hurry or rush that has been shown by the bjp and the rss only because the elections are around the corner firstly the argument on the merits of it is incorrect now i gave you the example of somnath temple you know somnath temple was consecrated when the then congress leadership was physically present you know purushottam das standan was i think he was the congress president at that time he was personally there he actually delivered his speech there one can say rajendra babu was the rashtrapati president of india he went not just he the state president of congress was there the national president of congress was there they were all present there the temple was not complete at that time do you know that it was in fact in that speech tandan himself says it may take about 10 years to complete this temple and for that matter maria i am a mm. believing hindu i know about the temples temples are never considered to be complete they will always be built and expanded always be new things uh, will be added but right now this temple has had its first level fully ready for consecration many other smaller temples are also ready now there will be further expansion there will be new things added in the coming years this will uh, go on for many years to come like it happened with somnath temple it took uh, 10 years after its consecration to bring it to what we see uh, as the somnath temple today so that argument that it's incomplete is actually not uh, a, a, a well thought out argument it's an argument for the sake of argument temples are never completed for that matter temples always get uh, renovated always get re- uh, added uh, new things are added but in this case a fully furnished fully equipped fully ready temple is being uh, kept for uh, installation of uh, bhagwan there the murti of the bhagwan there my last question to you sir when do you plan to visit ayodhya and uh, see the ram temple as well 
uh, <laughs> whenever the first opportunity comes but we have to uh, you know as uh, people involved uh, uh, i mean associated with an organization we have to follow the organizational discipline whenever uh, the organization suggests that it is time for all of us also to go uh, we would be the we would be happy to certainly visit the ram janmabhoomi and uh, have the darshan of Ramlala there. Uh, right now, after 22nd formal uh, consecration ceremony, a timetable has been decided. So each state will be bringing uh, uh, thousands of devotees uh, to Ayodhya on a given date. There is a calendar now. So maybe sometime uh, during that period, we all also will get a chance to go. All right. Uh, thank you so much for speaking to NDTV.